or would create mm -hmm. an absolutely ideal portal mm -hmm. from for yeah. entering one reality and um, entering another reality and that can be perceived whether it's a psychological portal that kind of creates time distortion space distortion by the the natural energy there or whether it's an actual physical portal um, certainly in terms of the way reality works in the dimensions that we accept it works in then stone circles are very important right. in keeping those dimensions um, as they are. Mm -hmm. uh, now, let's talk a little bit about ley lines. Uh, I know that uh, a while back uh, I saw a program that uh, I guess there's some uh, chaps going around the Seattle, the Seattle area uh, in Washington State of the United States uh, trying to put uh, uh, rest areas and trying to persuade builders to build on ley lines to get the benefits of ley lines. Do ley lines, if you find one, do you get some sort of health, wealth, uh, eternal life? What do you get if you were were to build on one or walk on one or, you know, lay down on one for well, that matter? <clears throat> what I suspect these guys are doing is tying into the um, ancient uh, Chinese art of Feng Shui, um, where, again, this ties back to dragons. The, the lines that you're calling or we're calling ley lines – um, they call dragon lines. They're lines of energy again throughout the earth. Um, passing from A to B, depending on what happens to those lay lines, depends upon A, the strength of them, how strong they are, and B, how beneficial they are. Um, a lot of people are trying to kind of suggest that certain types of energy are more negative, certain types of energy are more positive. I suspect it's down to us as people and our energy structure and who we are and our physiology, that's a long word, uh, psychology and physiology um, as to how energy impacts yeah. on us. Yeah. <coughs> Some of us are, you know, absolutely, you know, you could, uh, not that you want to go around doing this as an experiment, but some people, you know, seem to survive um, electric shocks and um, lightning strikes and so forth, and other people seem to die by them. You know, is there a reason why it's the same energy, it's the same stuff? So my kind of perception is that, you know, like I say, it's as much dependent upon the person as the energy itself. So I guess... You know, if you found a line that worked for you, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you could mm -hmm. direct it into your house using mirrors or build your house on that line or whatever. Hmm. I'm just wondering, do you know if the pyramids are built on any of these ley lines? I don't. <laughs> and, and by the way, let me ask you no. something. Let, let, me no. ask, let me ask uh, something, Steve. In your uh, DVD, Dragons and Rings, yes. uh, it seems like I saw what looked to be some sort of uh, mound uh, inside of a, a a big circle, like a small pyramid made of dirt. Was I was I looking at that right? Absolutely, yeah. You're referring to Silbury Hill, which isn't that far away from A3. It mm -hmm. is. Um, I guess the European equivalent of a pyramid. It is a man-made structure um, of earth that. Um, would possibly built, be built for a similar reason, although pyramids are built with chambers inside them very specifically. Um, no one has admitted to finding a chamber in Silbury Hill, although there was some interesting news running around a couple of years ago that there were some chambers in the hill, but um, that, you know, that's been discounted by other people. Yeah. Who do you believe? Yeah. And, and what, do you, what do you think that, uh, I guess... In, in the as far as the ancients goes, even here in lowly Indiana, there are ancient mounds. Uh, do you think these were just building uh, a way to build things, build them with dirt before they figure out they could use trees? Or do you think that the ancients knew that if you built a mound in a certain position and a certain way it was related to true north or otherwise, that they could tap into some sort of power? 
Yeah, I go with your second theory. Absolutely. Um, this is, you know, this is the point that I've come to in my research, that these guys, there may well be a point that they kind of found it accidentally. Do you know what I mean? You know, try on the error. But certainly, um, the whole kind of sequence of construction, the whole um, secret of the construction has been passed um, from mouth to mouth, paper to paper in many societies. Um, it's called sacred geometry. Um, and essentially is the deal of being able to lay out a space, lay out a structure in such a way that its geometry is literally sacred, it is holy, it has a form of power, if you like, in terms of the natural energy system that we live on that we call the Earth. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I would definitely say these guys knew what they were doing and why they were putting these places there. Um, more importantly, um, we only get to see a few of them nowadays. Um, we see evidence of maybe a few more um, but if you were to go back in time I guess you would find a huge amount more structures than we certainly see today mm -hmm. um, most of those structures have been destroyed either by people who kind of don't like them don't don't think they're good you know think they're negative or bad right. or been destroyed to make other houses make other stone circles make churches all kinds of things Okay. Uh, listen, Steve, we're getting near the end of our broadcast. Anything you'd like to say about your website, your DVD? Anything you go right ahead? Um, yeah, I guess we've kind of covered most of it. Um, and what we've said, the website, um, www.dragonsandrings.com, is essentially about the DVD, Dragons and Rings. On there, we've got a couple of the YouTube um, bits of film, which are excerpts from the entirety. So you kind of have to look at them bearing in mind that they're part of something bigger. Um, I've also got some more articles as I'm putting them up about um, orgone, um, crop circles, various things going on there. Um, a forum, as I said earlier on, which you can go on to, which I'm kind of busy looking at at the moment to, to expand, really, to give people a kind of chance to talk about various aspects. Um, some of the other work that I'm doing, um, I haven't got time to go into it now, but about Harry Houdini, of all things, um, funnily enough, kind of ties into an aspect of this stuff. Um... Yeah, you can listen to our music as well on there. I've got um, some music out with a band that I work with called Soul Path, so you can go and listen to that, or you can go onto the Soul Path website from there. Um, I, I, I think that kind of covers it, really. Okay. Well, uh, Steve Mitchell, oh, um, uh, yes, go ahead. That, that's right. Yeah, obviously, um, I'm working, like I said, as well on a bit of a book, so hopefully there'll be news of that coming on soon. So essentially, if you want to pick up any information about what's going on or email from me there, go for it. Keep us posted. Steve Mitchell, thank you so much for coming on the Edge Television Broadcast. And thank you very much for having me. All right, sir. Good evening, then. You have been listening to The Edge with Daniel Ott. To subscribe to The Edge newsletter, log on to theedgeam.com. That's theedgeam.com, where you can find out more about the guests and topics discussed on the air. The Edge is being brought to you by Internet Solutions home of affordable website design and low-cost internet access. Visit Internet Solutions at ES4.com. That's ES4.com. Until next week for the Edge Radio Broadcast, I'm Chris Moore. See you on the Edge. magic dragon lived by the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Hanali. Little Jackie Paper loved that rascal up and brought him strings and sealing wax and other fancy stuff. Oh, up the magic dragon. In a land called Hanalee